morning guys I guess I give you guys an update it's been a while lots of things have happened so this video is going to be a mix of parts and pieces and mishaps and unfortunate chain of events um, I don't remember the last video I put up but you knew the truck got a new cylinder head we went and loaded a Lee Bear LH60 so we were 16 wide somewhere between 100 and 100 and see 190 195,000 headed to Wichita Kansas and we are currently in Wichita Kansas with this jewel here which is actually a good machine got a pretty bad hydraulic oil leak you can see it all over the trailer and stinger um, <clears throat> curfew got us so we spent the night here last night we're getting close to our destination Tennessee and then we're going home um, it was a great looking Peterbilt we um so once we loaded we were supposed to go through um, Wyoming to get to our destination with the LH60 and because we were 16 wide, there was a um, width restriction. So we couldn't get permitted and we had to go through Colorado. <clears throat> so because of our height, we couldn't go through the tunnel and because of the landslide in uh, Glenwood Canyon, we had to go out and around which took us across three passes. We went up and down Monarch Pass, Gunnison Pass, and then Loveland Pass. All three of those are between 11 and 12,000 feet elevation. It took 11 hours to go that far. Um, incredible grades. There's really no place for that load, but hey, we did it. So once we got unloaded, uh, you see we don't have the Jeep. Um, we have been having a central tire inflation issue on the Jeep, and it kept blowing the inner seal, not of the hub, but of the tire inflation. So we dropped it at Trail King. It's a Meritor problem. They're warranting it. They're basically rebuilding the whole system. And <clears throat> from there, we um, was asked to move a Chieftain Power Screen 2100X, which is 62 feet long. Um, and we would have been 14, six tall if their information was correct. So what we did is we ran and we loaded that machine four times. We took our spare tire off because the screen package sets down on top of the neck. And just because our neck's so tall, which allows us to, you see all the hydraulic oil from the Chieftain where it leaked all over everything. <clears throat> all over the deck um, we couldn't get height down below 16.6 and they didn't want to pay for high pole and they didn't want to pay for route surveys and extra money um, so we hit them with a truck order not used 1750 bucks and we ended up settling for a couple hundred dollars less than that. They paid us and that was Friday afternoon, which pretty much means, you know, you're not getting a load over the weekend. Um, 
So we, we were having what we thought was a turbo squeal. So we called Jackson Group Peterbilt, told them the situation, because they're the ones that replaced the cylinder head, which we thoroughly tested across Gunnison, Monarch, and Loveland Pass, right? Um, still doing great. And <clears throat> they said, well, it's all under warranty. You can take it to any Cummins dealer you want to. Doesn't matter. It could be Peterbilt, Kenworth, Freightliner, whoever. So we were six miles from Rush Peterbilt in Denver. We called them. And they said, yep, bring it on right now. So we were unloaded. And we um, went in there. And... Um, they said, well, you got an exhaust manifold leak. Didn't sound like an exhaust manifold leak to me, but okay. He said, we can take care of it. We'll have you up and running tonight. So I was glad about that. And then all this bullshit started about, well, Cummins is not going to warranty gaskets within 30 days of a repair. I said, so you're telling me they're not going to warranty their warranty? So we called Jackson Group back and they said, oh yeah, the truck's still under warranty, still under Cummins warranty. If they don't warranty it, we will. And they put that in writing via email. So long and short of that, $1,800. And it got really heated. They got one special prick that works there at um, Rush Peterbilt in Denver, Mr. Jason Duncan. What, what a buddy, you're an asshole, total asshole. Everybody else was great, but you. So they had a, a, a fee on their bill called a machine fee, which basically it's like a shop supply fee where they it's how they pay for their their computers. Granted, they didn't plug a computer into this to change the exhaust manifold gaskets, so. The email from Jackson Group, and I even overheard the conversation where Jackson Group said, look, the customer shouldn't be in the middle of this. If it's workmanship, Jackson Group will pay for it if Cummins doesn't pay for it. And the only thing that they were arguing about is this machine fee. There was one for $174 and one for 45 bucks. And this guy just started showing his ass. He said, just take the truck, man. Just get out of here. I'm like, no, buddy. If you need, if you really need me to pay you for that, if it's that big of a deal. So I give him my credit card for $1,800, which they haven't charged my card yet. But we'll get our money back from Cummins if they do. Um, but just unbelievable asshole. Total asshole. But anyway, back to the, the head. So they replaced the exhaust gaskets on the truck, which didn't look bad to me. And then the gasket for the EGR was bad. So they fixed that up, short order, six and a half hours worth of book time that they did in about two. Um, I don't know what to tell you, man. I just, it, it, it's, it's hard to be a fan of uh, people that act that way. So uh, anyway, it's all covered. Truck's pulling well. Um, we, we laid the weekend. Uh, Monday, um, that chief didn't load. They were, everybody was trying to get it moved. And one of them even called me, hey, you, can you do this? I'm like, and they had it labeled as a different machine. So I called the place where I loaded. I said, is this the same machine? Yep, it's the same machine. And they also told me, man, they've sent three trucks in before you that couldn't move it either. So we told them they needed to take their, you know, the top part of the screen off or either they needed an extendable. They needed 36 feet or more in the well to be able to move that machine. Um, a little interesting story about that is while we were there loading and I kept telling them guys, I mean, we took it off the trailer, turned it around. We just couldn't get down the height. And, um, the gentleman that purchased it, he flew in from the Dominican Republic to uh, to meet me and to meet the load because it was going to Port Everglades, which means I was going home, which is where I'm going after I unload this. 
Um, really nice guy, kind of like me, very analog. And um, he's, you know, after we he hauled around with all of the loading and unloading, he said, "Let's go eat." So I hopped in this car with him. This guy's driving like just crazy, like a New York cab driver. And uh, I'm praying that we don't get run over. And he's like me, running two cell phones. And um, so we go eat Italian food. And uh, guys zipping in and out of traffic like, you know, Mario Andretti. So we get back and they had decided, okay, we're gonna get a crane and we're gonna take this big section off the truck, off the top. And then all of a sudden, the, somebody in the Dominican Republic says, no, we're not gonna do that. And I said, all right, well, let's unload it. And he said, well, why can't you go at 16.6? I said, I'm sorry, I, I, I we'll get it there, but it's gonna cost a lot more money. So we give them a, an approximate price. It basically doubled the rate to do that. And um, they were like, nah, we'll give you a thousand extra bucks. I'm like, bud, that's never gonna fly with anybody. Don't, you know, you're wasting your time even asking for that. So at that point it was um, truck order not used money. And we hit them for the deadhead. We hit them for a full day and um, 1,750 bucks and we basically knocked a couple hundred off of that to uh, close it out and they paid us. So um, Monday, um, there was quite a few loads that we could do and we were really trying to go to Florida, towards Florida to go home. Um, a lot of loads we negotiated on and they were just really not the right load, not what we were looking for. So this load popped up going from Rifle, Colorado to Tennessee, which of course is not Florida, but it's close. And, and if we wanted to, we could get a load out of Tennessee or Kentucky going south, but we're just gonna deadhead from there. So uh, we go out to uh, rifle which is a back across the mountain through glenwood canyon and all of that and <clears throat> we go way way out and meet this gentleman this is going he's delivering it to his son in tennessee and i'll insert a picture of a pretty cool auto car which is the identical truck that I took my CDL driving test in many, many, many years ago, probably back in like 1990, maybe. Um, I'll insert pictures of that truck. That's a pretty cool old truck. And it was for sale, and I'm thinking, man, I should buy that and, you know, have something to throw money away on as if I don't have enough of those things. Um, Oh, and Frank, I, I'm, I'm working on what you asked me about. Um, I'm not sure that I have a solution yet, but I'm trying to figure something out. So I will get back with you on that. Uh, but anyway, so this is a Cat 225. What I thought it was a 235, but it's a 225. And um, they said it weighed 50,000. It doesn't. It weighs 55,000. And other than this terrible hydraulic leak, this machine fired up, ran really good. Tracks were good on it. I mean, no squealing. It's just a nice old cat machine. And we chained the exhaust flap, flapper down, not chain, tie wire, baling wire. You see the old school sprocket on the rear here. Just a cool old machine. See, we've lost a flag, but uh, we're running on seven. Um, we can run it on six, but 
I think, is it Kansas or Missouri, won't allow us to have more than 18,000 on the steer. And if we run it on six, we're at 19.5 on the steer. So we're just running it on seven just to make everybody smile a little bigger. Uh, but the Jeep will be ready next week, which of course next week I leave to go back to South Dakota to go pheasant hunting. Um, and I'm probably just going to drive my pickup again to go hunting. So not a lot's going to happen the rest of this month. We will move some local stuff. When I say local, it'll be regional to uh, Florida. And then the last week of the month, I'm in Fort Lauderdale on vacation with my wife. And uh, which I'm really looking forward to. And... Um, I mean, who in the world don't want to spend a week with a hot brunette in Fort Lauderdale? If you don't, there's something wrong with you. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so that's what's happening. We're in Topeka, Kansas. We're waiting on the curfew to lift. Uh, we're going to run on up. And um, we won't quite make it. If there wasn't curfews, we would be able to unload late this afternoon. It's probably not going to happen. We'll have to unload in the morning. There is um, a big load. Well, that's not really big. It's 90,000. That's going to Jacksonville, but I don't know. With the width and all, it'll probably require setting over the weekend, and that's just not something I'm willing to do. Uh, I want to get home at a dentist appointment Monday, and then Tuesday I will... Uh, leave to go hunting so that's what's happening but this is it cat 225 it's supposed to weigh 50,000 of course it doesn't you can see it's got some pretty serious oil leak up there they need to work on and then this main cylinder right here needs to be they need to pull that and repack that cylinder she's pouring oil pretty good so that's what's going on guys there'll be i'll mix in or add in all the other crazy stuff that you haven't seen and uh we will um we'll get her all back going pretty good here it's been just a crazy crazy month and um really glad to be out of the northwest glad the cylinder head issue is hopefully behind us and um, hope I get to meet Jason Duncan one day just and you could tell he was a young snot-nosed punk I guess he was just going to show a trucker how, how it is but he, he didn't win I mean that, not that anybody is out to be winning anything but you know, how American are you, bud? You're $45. I mean, his exact words is, I don't care how much money you've lost over this head replacement. It's not my problem. You're right, bud. It's not your problem. I might be your problem, though, but we'll see. So that's it, guys. Um, I'll be back.
fellas, y'all check this out. Just walked back from getting a shower. Somebody brought us some uh, some purples. We had some purples in a little while. Real quick though, we're headed out. We are fixing to uh, be at Trail King. Gonna get some service work done on the Jeep. And uh, we're gonna run some eight axle loads while they work on that. We got about a week and a half yet before uh, we go do our pheasant hunt. And then the end of the month, we'll be on vacation for about five days. So, um, thought that was pretty neat. Whoever did that, much appreciated. We will definitely, uh, we will definitely consume those. So again, thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys shortly. Here's the note, guys, that was in the bag. Enjoy some monsters and some water on me today. Love the videos. Keep being a kick-ass guy, Ryan. Ryan, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Uh, mighty nice of you. We will keep making the videos. Wish we had more content to give you, but doing what we can do. So we'll see you guys. Guys are winching him out. We can't pass, we're too wide. They're pulling him out. Gun smoke towing and recovery. That's just about that. Headed back to the truck. All right, guys, as far as we made it, we just run out of light. Thought I'd give you a little snippet. Video just uploaded, took two days. Um, we're here on US 6, getting ready to roll into Colorado. And uh, this is where we're going to spend the night. Both of our pilot cars are headed to their hotel. Uh, you can see the windmills behind us, I guess. I'll shoot you a little video in the morning in the daylight. But uh, so when we left the quarry, we went through a turn that. I don't know how we made it. it. It was so tight. Unbelievable. We got high centered. We were leaned over hard so we couldn't pick up any hydraulic oil to raise our trailer any higher. So we had to hook a dump truck to the front of the truck to, uh, to help him ease us along because it had rained and the road was slick. It was a very bad situation. So, no, you can't see much. This is what it's about. This is where we're sleeping. And in the morning, we'll shoot it and you can see all the mountains around us. So, I'll be back, guys. Go up here and check out this Volvo loader. y'all think of this Volvo. Volvo built a first class loader. Hmm. Might have automatic greasing. Yeah, it does. That's good. Oh, battery box cover's missing. Yeah, this is a nice machine. 
is a L350, I think. Yep, L350F. And there's that dozer we saw yesterday. That is a D6T LGP, not, not a seven. But you can see we were up there loading, which is about, they tell me, 100 feet higher in elevation. And this quarry is over, and this is the last little bit. So they're hauling in, and we're moving out. Um, show you this badass Mac over here. This is a real truck. They don't build them like this anymore. The old gull wing hood. I'm not sure what model they called the gull wing hood. This is a stud right here, guys. Total stud. Let's check out their light bar so they can see at night here. We'll open the door. The model will be on it. 80 grand. All right, so this is, what is that? This is an RD866SX. Just can't beat it, man. You just can't beat it. Oh, they sure don't build them like this anymore. That cab will rust off the truck and be gone. And those Mac rears and all of this other Mac get up will be still good one. This is where you drive across when you come out to scale. They uh, wash their tires. Then it pumps all of this shit back up in this tank right here. It's got a little auger on it that it pushes the dirt out on the other side. And this keeps them from getting shit all over their scale and tracking it out. Out on the highway. So guys, there's a width restriction in Wyoming they're trying to get us around uh, we have Colorado permit we have Utah Idaho we don't have Oregon it's approved it's just waiting on district one whatever district one is uh, one of our escorts is here we may have to run this out through Montana which is about another 600 miles uh, so that's not an auger that's a bucket elevator and you can see how it scoops that crap out the bottom and then dumps it here. All the silt and slurry. That's how that works. Um, so we may not run this. Uh, there's a chance we might not. Um, it will cost more money for us to go 600 miles. You see how that cleaned his tires. So now he's on the scale, he's empty. He's just getting a ticket because they're probably paying by the load to dump here. And you see one going up the hill. But that's it, that's how it works. So that's what we're doing. Hurry up and wait. You don't have patience, you can't do this. We'll be back.